and welcome to video number three in the program debugging series. Today we're going to be debugging a challenge program that comes from lesson 17.2. The challenge program for that lesson had the user input a year and then went through some calculations to determine whether or not that year was a leap year. And there were some rules that we used to calculate a leap year. Uh, the first was that any year divisible by four is a leap year unless it can also be evenly divided by 100, then it's not a leap year, unless it can also be evenly divided by 400, then it is a leap year. So when we debug the program, I'll go ahead and throw those rules up and we'll work through it. So the code that was left in the comments, I had the shell of the program up and the input statements were done correct. So we are going to work through how to do the checks to get a realistic response on whether or not a year is a leap year. Let's head on over to the Python programming window and debug the Lesson 17.2 Challenge program. Okay, so here we are over in our Python programming window and I've already copied and pasted the code we're going to be debugging here into the programming window and I've already named my program programdebugging3.py. Before I give this an initial run, I'm going to write down the rules in comments so that I can keep them straight as I'm working on this program. So leap years are divisible by four unless it's divisible by 100, except if it's also divisible by 400. So those are, those are my four rules right there that I have to keep in mind. Now to properly debug this program, I'm gonna want some dates that I know are either leap years or not leap years. And so I might even calculate that on a calendar or on a calculator at first, just to make sure that I have some information so I know what response I'm supposed to get. Let's go ahead and open up just the uh, Windows calculator here and work through a couple years so we have examples of leap years and non-leap years. So let's put some information into the calculator. Let's start with the year 1996. I want to check if that's a leap year, and using my rules, I'm going to divide it by 4. Since I get a number with no remainder, 499, I know that the year is divisible by 4, and it's not divisible by 100 or 400, so 1996 would be a leap year. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in a comment there, so I know that 1996 should be a leap year. I'm also going to try 1988 divided by 4, and I can see that 1988 is a leap year as well. So let's use 1988. I'm also going to add a comment up here for non-leap years. And there's certainly you know, a lot of non-leap years, but any odd number is going to be not a leap year. So 1999 was not a leap year, 2003, 2013, those are not leap years. But also in that list, if I check my calculator, if I take the year 1988 or 1998, and divide that by 4, I can see I get 499.5. Since there's a remainder, I know that a year such as 1998 is a non-leap year. Now a year like 2000 is a bit tricky because if I take the year 2000 and divide it by 4, I get no uh, remainder, but it's also divisible by 100 except if it's also divisible by 400. So that's kind of a tricky one, but if I take 2000 and divide it by 400, I get no remainder as well. So a year like 2000 was a leap year. So that should be identified as a leap year. But if we take a year, uh, for example, 1800. 1800 divided by four is 450. However, 1800 divided by 100 gives us no remainder. So it is divisible by 100. And 1800 divided by 400 is not an even number. So a year like 1800 should be shown as a non-leap year because while it is divisible by 4, it's also divisible by 100. Close my calculator down here. Now I have some data that I can try in this program to see if it's correctly identifying leap years or non-leap years. So to start debugging this program, let's go ahead and just give it a run window pops up here and I want to check a year. I want to check 1999. 1999 is being identified as not a leap year, so we're good to go there. Let's try 2013. Not a leap year. 
fantastic. 1996 is a leap year. Let's try 1988 is a leap year. So, so far, these checks seem to be going pretty well. Run this and check 1800. 1800 is being identified as a leap year. So that's not working right here. That's something we might need to take a look at. Let's go ahead and try 2000. Oops. Try the year 2000 and 2000 is being identified as a leap year. So at first run right here, I can see that there's a problem identifying whether or not a year is divisible by 100, but also by four. So having run this program a little bit, I have an idea of where I want to start. When I look up here in the code, what I can see is the, the variable user stores the number that the user types in, and it is correctly changed over to an integer, so we can do math on it. We're then identifying a, a variable leap year, which is equal to the user integer division by four. So if I were to come over to the Python shell, let's say uh, the user enters 2000 and I get divided by four, I'm getting 500. 1999 divided by four is 499. So I've got a bit of a, a check on this that I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with. What I wanna do is find a way to use the mod command. So instead of integer division, if I were to do 2000 mod four, I can tell that there's no remainder. 1999 mod 4 Oops, let's go back. gives me a 3, which means I have a remainder of 3. 1998 mod 4 gives me a 2. 1996 mod 4 gives me a 0. So what I want to do is convert this check right here to use the mod command to determine whether or not there's a remainder when it's divis divisible by 4 rather than doing integer division. So let's change leap year rather than user integer division four. We're gonna change that to mod four and that will let us know if there's a remainder or not. Now, when I think about this program right here, I think we have all the information we need to make a valid check. So for now, I'm going to get rid of this variable that is set equal to or the true variable right here. Instead, I'm going to use that leap year variable to do our calculations. So let's, let's keep our else statement, but for right now, I'm just gonna delete these references to true since I just got rid of that variable. The first check I wanna make, and the only check that I wanna make right now, is is the year divisible by four or not? We'll work on those special cases in a minute. So I'll say if leap year, which was equal to user mod four. So if leap year, is equal to zero, then we know it's divisible by four, and we can print percent %s is a leap year, and then print in the user's number. The reason I know that is because the only way we can have a leap year is if a number is divisible by four evenly, and if a number divided by four has a remainder of zero, then I know we have that division took place. Then, if leap year is not equal to zero, then I know it had a remainder and I can print percent %s is not a leap year. And so let's check this now and see, are we identifying numbers that have been div evenly divisible by four? So I'm gonna check 2000 and I get a leap year. 1996, I get a leap year. 1990, not a leap year. 1988, a leap year. So by making this check right here and using modular division instead of integer division, I'm now able to tell if a number is evenly divisible by four. Now that's definitely a good start, but we still have these special cases that we have to work with down here at the bottom. Well, I know if a number is divisible by 400, then without a doubt, it's a leap year because 400 by itself is divisible by four, so every number that's divisible by, by 400 is also divisible by four. So that's gonna be the first check I make because that's a definitive statement. If a number is divisible by 400, it is without exception a leap year. So if leap year, or if user, let's do user, mod 400 is equal to zero, 
that will return whether or not the user's number is divisible by 400. If we get a zero, we know it's divisible by 400. And I can print percent %s is a leap year, and then print the user's number. So I'm not using this leap year number right here because this is only letting us know if a number is divided by 4. Instead, I'm just going to do the math here and check, is it divisible by 400? If it is, we should identify it as a leap year. So let's run this program now and check 2000. We're getting 2000 as a leap year twice. Now here's a bug that I kind of have to work out a little bit. Because these are two if statements right now, it's printing off twice because the number is divisible by 400 and it's also divisible by 4. I'm going to change the second if clause to an elif clause. If this is found to be true, we can skip every other check. We've already identified the leap year. So let's run this program, check the year 2000, and see that 2000 is a leap year. If we check 2400, I can see 2400 is a leap year, 1600 is a leap year, and that's because they're all evenly divisible by 400. Now that our program has the ability to check to see if a number divided by 400 has a remainder of 0, we have to check our next exception is, is a number divisible by 100? We kind of want to do these in reverse order because this right here is a 100% truth. Every number divisible by 400 without exception is a leap year. Here, every number divided by 100 is not a leap year unless it's also divisible by 400. But since we've already made this check, if a number is divisible by 400, we won't make any more checks in this program. So we're going to add that second case here immediately after we check to see if a number is divided by 400. So else if the user's number mod 100 is equal to 0, meaning that it's evenly divided by 100, we're going to print percent %s is not a leap year. So if a number is divisible by 100, it's going to be not a leap year and completely skip the rest of these checks. So let's try it with the year 1900. See, I had to clear my screen there for a second, but we got our window back up. So let's check the year 1900. 1900 is being identified as not a leap year. This initial check here evaluates the false, moving it to its next check. This check here evaluates the true, identifying the year as not a leap year, and now skips all the remaining checks because we found our one that's true. If we were to also try this, say, with the year 1800, 1800 is identified as not a leap year because we make this initial check, which evaluates the false, the second check, which evaluates the true, giving us our answer. If a number isn't divisible by 400 and isn't divisible by 100, then there are no special cases. We've just, with these two checks, identified every unique case for a year that can come up. Everything else is either, is it divisible by 4 or is it not? And we've already been able to do that by establishing this leap year variable here by taking user mod 4. If user mod 4 doesn't have a remainder, we know the year is a leap year. And if it is not equal to zero, meaning that user mod 4 has a remainder, we know that it's not a leap year. But these checks right here only check the years that aren't divisible by 400 and aren't divisible by 100. By handling those two checks first, we can weed out those special cases like your year 2100, your year 2000, your year 2400. We weed those out before we do any simple checks on whether a number is divisible by 4. Running this program now, let's try 1999. Not a leap year, fantastic. Let's try 2003. Not a leap year. So let's try our 1996, which is a leap year. 1988, which is a leap year. So, so far those have worked. Let's try 1800. Not a leap year, fantastic. And let's go ahead and just try 2200, just in case. Not a leap year, so the divisible by 100 check is now working. And finally, we can check 2000. Oops, that's, uh, didn't just print that, that's, that's my screen that did that. Sorry about that. 
let's try 2000 here. There we go. Uh, 2000 is a leap year. 2400 is a leap year. And so now we've recoded this program so it is correctly using all the rules we talked about to identify whether a year is a leap year. So that right there is the process that I would go through to debug this. The easiest way to handle a program like this is to just handle it case by case. Write a program that can correctly identify non-leap years versus leap years. Don't worry about all the special cases, just get one that knows whether or not a number is divisible by four. Once you have that working flawlessly, you can go back and add conditional checks to see if any of these special cases have occurred. So now that this is done, I can erase those notes off the bottom of my program, and what I end up with is this guy right here. Now for all my programs, I do like to go in and comment them. So this will check to see if a number is divisible by 400. Check to see if a number is divisible by 100. This is a check to see if a number is divisible by four. And this check to see if a number is not divisible by four. So I have my four checks here. I've got comments in here. And now I would consider this program to be complete and I would button it up and you know, add any kind of special stuff you want, any user interfaces. But the shell of this program is now working correctly. So that right there is going to wrap up video number three in the program debugging series. Hopefully anybody who's been struggling with the leap year program uh, found some tips and tricks that can help them work through their conditional checks. As always, if that didn't do the trick, just go ahead and leave your questions in the comments and I will be happy to help you work through any of the individual challenges that you've been having with your particular program. I'd like to thank everybody for your support, not only of the Python tutorial series, but of the program debugging series. Anything I can do to help you become a better programmer, I'm definitely willing to do. So have a great day and we'll see you next time.